Gil Coliseum in Corvallis, Oregon State. A surprising 6-2 to start the year, taking on the Tigers of Grambling State tonight. Defense, suddenly the dynamic on display, most of all, for the Beavers. Welcome inside, and along with Lamar Hurd, I'm Josh Lewin. Pleasure to have you here. Very temperate outside, but indoors tonight. Record lows maybe in the forecast. <laughs> you might be right, because Oregon State is a defensive force this year. Eighth in the country, allowing opponents to only shoot 34% from the field. This isn't your Beavers of year past. They're going to look to shut down Grambling State tonight. Grambling State, the lowest scoring team in Division I right now. And they've got to deal with Gary Payton II. Not only them, but any opponent that plays Oregon State, because Gary Payton II is the real deal. He shows up to play night in, night out, averaging 14 points per game, right under 10 rebounds, and he's just able to go up there and finish, makes impressive plays defensively as well as offensively, always looking to assert himself and makes highlight plays look rather easy. Wearing number one, but he's not just a one-man band. There are other Beavers getting it done. Tons of options. Six different Beavers have led or shared as the leading scorer this season. A lot of different options, different positions, it's a team that looks to assist. They share the basketball well. Shooters knock down open shots, and that's how they want to play. Oregon State looking to get to 7-2 and two with a win tonight. And again, in the past, it's been about putting that ball in the basket. This year, more about preventing it, the other team, from getting it done. It is Oregon State and Grambling State coming up next. Six and two, three straight wins. The two losses to Oklahoma State and Auburn. Auburn by just a bucket. Grambling State is two and five. They are, well, two and zero oh against teams that are not in Division One. Let's put it that way. They've struggled otherwise. And here's their starting lineup. It's a young team. Their star is the one senior they have, a Tory Shine, wearing number one. He's actually averaging 14 points a game for a team that's averaging 44 points a game. As for Oregon State, now you see what they're all about. No seniors, not only in the starting lineup, but no seniors on this entire team, Lamar. Well, that's why it's so important for there to be a leader on the court. And Gary Payton II has emerged as that vocal leader. And his production isn't bad either. 14 points per game, right around 9, 10 rebounds. He's definitely putting up big for the Beavers. Well, when Wayne Tinkle came on and took this job, one of the things he told everybody is we're going to really change our approach and make sure that we become about defense. And so far, so good. I mean, th this is so telling. And I'm a guy not huge on numbers because you have to factor in different competition levels between the years. But the stat that really speaks to me about what they do is They've held three opponents under 30% from the field this season. That hasn't been done in the past two seasons. That's impressive. That's why they're on the Wayne train right <laughs> now. On the other sideline is Sean Walker. It's his first year hired away from a Division II Elizabeth City State in North Carolina. And there's really no gentle way to say it. It is a tall task. This is a complete rebuild for Grambling. This is a team that two years ago went the entire season without a single win. Only the eighth time in Division I history somebody did that. So knowing that it takes a while to turn a battleship around, small victories here and there will be what they're looking to do. And their challenge tonight, you've already said it, is scoring the basketball. You're playing against one of the better defensive teams in the Pac-12, which is still weird to say when you consider you're talking about Oregon State, which in years past has been a team that's given up a lot of easy buckets. But Wayne Tinkle has gotten these guys to buy in, and here they go. First defensive possession, they open up in a man-to-man. -man. And again, if Grambling is going to score, a Tory Shine is going to be their guy. Preseason all-conference in the SWAC. These Tigers had a win against a Division II team last time out, but against the Division I programs, we mentioned they're 0-5, they've lost by 52 points twice. On the drive, no sale there for Mark Gray. And away with it comes Gary Payton the second. When that ball is loose and Peyton's around it, he somehow just finds a way to get his hands on it. I, I say when the ball is bouncing near him, it's not a 50-50 ball. It's normally like 80-20 advantage Peyton. Gomez kicks it out. It's stolen. And it's Shine weaving through traffic, but missed the shot. Trying to save it. Peyton slips. 
And it's out of bounds back to the Tigers. This is exactly what Oregon State's coaching staff was a bit afraid of. You had a huge win against Mississippi State of the SEC. As you see Gary Payton II just slipping, trying to chase the ball down. But it was due to a bad pass. And the Beavers coaching staff wanted to see if the team would have a little bit of that hangover effect from the victory. Or if they'd be locked in and ready to go. Finals are done. Right. So now it's all basketball. Last time out, a very quick start for Oregon State. They got up 16-2 against Mississippi State. Ended up winning that game by 10. All-timer had it poked away. And the tallest man got it. That's Daniel Gomez. And here come the Beavers. And again, what's going to be, we figure, a real defensive struggle tonight. Well, we're seeing early on what makes Oregon State so good defensively. It, they switch defenses, sometimes middle possession. And they've done that a few times already, showing a little zone to start off a possession. And then at the end, they'll, they'll go man-to-man -man as the shot clock's running down. And then the better defense you play, the more freedom Coach Wayne Tinkle is going to give his players on the offensive end. Duvivier rains it down. In it tonight, he had hit just four of his last 22 from the field. So that's great for him to get that booster shot of confidence right away. Grambling State held to 30 points at Purdue last month and then 34 at Air Force last week. They're one of two teams in the nation averaging fewer than 53 points a game. Florida A&M is there with them. Shot clock at four. Cormier rising fire. Not even close. And here come the Beavers quickly. Gomez, jam. Great hit ahead. Daniel Gomez, pretty athletic. Center for the Beavers. He can get up and down the court. Nice find from Peyton. Now again, out 16 to two. Last home game, they're out 5-0 tonight, and now can make it more. Peyton a steal, imagine that. Duvivier lays it up and in, 7-0. Surprise Malcolm Duvivier didn't go up and throw that one down. He's very athletic, nice lead from, from Peyton. And Oregon State, we've seen it a few times, Josh. You see it, their show zone look right now. And then they'll just match up right out of it. And for Peyton, another steal. He's second in the Pac-12 right now. Contact underneath. T.J. McConnell of Arizona, the only man in the conference with more steals than Peyton. I told you, the ball's around him. It, it's 80-20. It's not 50-50. Just has a good knack for where the basketball's going to go. Got the Grambling State defender to commit to him. Dropped it off for an easy layup for DeVivier. Grambling State with a chance to get on the board now. Mark Gray, 78% foul shooter. Grambling State picked 10th in the 10-team SWAC, although they received one out of 10 votes for first. Hint, the coaches get the 10 votes. <laughs> yeah, I think that one I think that was pretty easy to locate. <laughs> Sean Walker said, I'm not picking against my guys. Right, you got to believe in your guys. One first place vote and nine tenths. And a little touch foul out here on Cormier. This is an aspect that the Beavers want to get better at, half-court offense. They're pretty good in transition, open-court play. But when you get down to the half-court, that really exposes their lack of a true, solid point guard. They got a lot of good guards, good scoring guards, but trying to develop that guy that can get him into offense while being pressured. Wild flurry, and out of the pack with it, Peyton to Duvivier, and they'll reset. No looks yet for Schaftenar, the big Dutchman. Oh, he'll get his looks. He likes offense a little bit too much to go without his looks, but he's also one of the most unselfish guys on the team, one of the best passers. That's why they utilize him at the high post. And he muscles his way in, missed the shot. And they kick it back out one more time. Duvivier, splash! Good find from Peyton. Duvivier, he can do that. Feet set, ready to shoot. No hesitation. He's got eight before the first TV timeout. The average is seven per game. Well, we talked about it. They have six guys who have led in scoring or, or shared as the leading scorer. So it's not just a Gary Payton show. Ball is saved, but the Beavers end up with it. And here's Duvivier again. 
Doesn't have the numbers quite yet. Now right back out to Morris Walker, who was really the, the big guy off the jump last game against Mississippi State. Really good shooter. Got going early in that game against Mississippi State. I would like to see Oregon State get Duvivier another touch right here. He's a little hot from the field. Or if you get a baseline oh, huh. dunk, I mean, you don't pass up on that if that presents itself to you. Boy, Langston Morris Walker. And it's like the... The velvet rope was lifted. He walked right through the club. The defender crowded him, and Morris Walker, he's capable of putting the ball on the floor. So athletic, one, two dribbles, he's at the rim. Beavers by 10 already. And as much attention to detail they're paying defensively, and again against a team that's so hard-pressed to score, we've got our thumb on the record books tonight to see exactly how low can they go. Schuftenar! That's what it gives you, that ability to pick and pop. And he can also roll. He's playing inside the paint as well this season, shooting 50% of his field goal attempts from two-point range, whereas the last two seasons he shot 80% of his attempts from three. He's diversifying his game, but he's still comfortable behind that line. Boy, and Wayne Tinkle, good on you. 16-2 and 15-2, their last two starts here at home. Tigers usually milk that clock down before they got to get a shot away. Good move. That's a great job by Mark Gray to twist and score. He's got all four for them. Gray knows he's playing against a shot blocker and Daniel Gomez, so he turns, shows the basketball. That's what you do to any shot blocker. You make him jump, and then a nice finish. It's basically a running clock here. There have been, what, <laughs> two whistles? Yeah, it's like an AAU basketball game. When Grambling State played at Notre Dame, Mike Bray said, that's the fastest game I've ever been a part of. It was basically about an hour and a half. Well, most coaches, when they have a run going against them, they'll call a timeout, but no timeout on Grambling's side. They like to play on. Kyle Williams with that rebound. Tigers just one out of five from the field. Beavers are six out of nine. Cormier slithering through. Good defense. Beavers holding their position, staying disciplined. Another rebound for Peyton. Up and a blocking foul. Score it. Great decision from Peyton. In the open court, the defense does not stop you. That's the first key to defensive transition. Somebody has to stop the basketball. You can't get so deep with Gary Payton. He can elevate over the top of you, going to the line for the end one. Pac-12 basketball brought to you by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. Gary Payton, the second, continuing to shine, just got fouled by a guy whose last name is Shine. He will be at the line to shoot here, trying to improve what is already a great night for Oregon State. The Beavers leading 17 to 4. Payton leading this Oregon State team in scoring, rebounding, steals. He is second in block shots. All of that at six foot three. I made the comment today that I think he's arguably the most important player to a team than anybody else in the conference. You somehow take him off this roster, and you've seen it in certain games when Oregon State may be in a close game, a team may start pressing, and Peyton's not on the court. A lot of turnovers ensue, and they're just not as calm of a team as when he is in there. And a lot of times, offensive rebound, he saves bad possessions. This does so much for the team. 10-second violation. That's something you, you see that often these days. You mentioned the Tigers are very deliberate in their offensive sets. Too deliberate that time, too slow. Duvivier, and he's got Victor Robbins with him in the game now, wearing number four. Round and out from a Shoftenar, and it'll be Grambling State basketball. Three times already the Beavers have held an opponent to less than 30% shooting. Something they hadn't done at all in the last two seasons coming into this one. They held Oral Roberts to 20%. Grambling State is one out of six tonight. And, you know, that's that's impressive to me because, like I said, it hasn't been done in the last two seasons. And Oregon State had one of the best defensive players in the conference the last two years and a guy named Eric Moreland who's now right. playing with the Sacramento Kings, one of the best shot blockers in the conference, in the country, one of the best rebounders. Tigers looking for a shot, and they misfire from Ramond Brown. 
little bobble, and that's going to go right back to Grambling State as Robbins couldn't hold it. That was Brown who took the shot for the Tigers. He's two for his last 25, and it's all over. Thursday night, don't miss another Oregon State men's basketball game right here on Pac-12 Network. Seven Pacific, the Beavers taking on the Blue Demons of DePaul. Tonight, taking on the Tigers of Grambling State and throttling the Tigers at this moment. 17 to 4, eight of the points from DeVivier. You know, last year, Oregon State had a freshman guard named Alice Cook who transferred to Iowa State, and all the noise was geared towards him and his play, and rightfully so. But Malcolm DeVivier, have that same kind of ability for Beaver fans who are not quite used to him. He just needed an opportunity. Didn't play a lot of minutes. Uh, already you see what he's able to do. Eight points. He's averaging 7.3 for the season, but he's led the team in scoring before this season. He's the kind of guy who can go off for 20 points. Shoots it well. Yeah. Drives well. Good decision maker. Good all-around player. Got a lot of high basketball IQ guys on this Oregon State team. Peyton looking for another steal. Wrestles it away. 80-20. Did I tell you? I mean, it's not a 50-50 basketball if he's around it. That's a great call by you. With his dad's photo hanging from the rafters here at Gold Coliseum. You almost... I want to look up and see if Dad is winking from that banner after he makes a play like that. Wide open three, Robbins, bang! Now that's a kid that's coming along, Victor Robbins. Around the program, they talk about him and say he's the most athletic player on the team, which is saying a lot because we've seen a lot of the highlight plays Gary Payne the second has made. But Robbins is coming along, comes up with a nice deal. And the Beavers push into the corner and back out to Payton. The three ball goes! Not only is he shooting a good percent, over 40% from three, but it looks really good coming off his hands. And that was a knock early on. People didn't know whether or not he could shoot the basketball well enough. That's an over and back on Grambling State. They have shot seven field goal attempts in about 10 minutes now. And Oregon State, after the stops, they're getting out and they're running. And I'm not sure that's a shot Peyton would have shot somewhat contested in the first two, three games of the season. But I mean, he's confident. He's earned that respect. Coach Tinko wants him to shoot those open shots. Oregon State, remember, got out 16-2 in its last home game, and they have upped the ante here tonight. Peyton almost lost the dribble, but keeps it hot. Tanner Sanders in the game now, by the way. And now here come the Tigers. That's knocked away out of bounds, and we'll keep it right here. We just got to look at exactly what Oregon State does need to work on in this game. Now, Oregon State is supposed to win this game, and they're supposed to win it big, but there's things you need to work on throughout the process. And for one thing, with them, it's, it's half-court execution. Timing, feeding the post, making the right passes. You see a nice shot from the corner. They lose their man defensively. Carlton Lowe, who can score in bunches. He had six points in about 90 seconds last week to help Grambling State pull away from Division II Selma. And again, their two wins have been against Division II and Division III. They're just getting whomped on by the D1s so far. And boy, avert your eyes. They get UW next. That's Wednesday in Seattle. What a team that's turning out to be, huh? Wow. Yeah. Uh, I told you, uh, all fair, I think UW defensively, specifically in their 2-3 zone. It's the best 2-3 zone I've seen from a Lorenzo Romar team. Wow. Yeah. And he's been around the conference since 2002. But just the length on the back line, big Robert Upshaw, seven footer, has a seven foot, five inch and a half wingspan. He's got 39 block shots already. That ball goes back to Grambling State. There's 245 Division I teams that don't have 39 block shots. <laughs> He's impressive. I mean, I've seen him, as you see, they're 16th in the country right now. Had a, a, a big win against Eastern Washington. And you may say, wait, a big win against Eastern Washington. Well, Eastern Washington but beat is, Indiana, is, right? Yes, exactly, at Indiana. They're a good team. Um, Upshaw, though, I've seen him laying off shooters five feet. Shot goes up, and he closes that space in, in, in a matter of milliseconds. Really impressive. Nigel williams guys playing like a potential player of the year. It's a lot to be excited about up in Seattle. And Grambling State will be the appetizer. They will take on <laughs> Oklahoma after that. Here's Peyton into the corner. Three ball. No. Richard Freeman will back it out. Cormier slashing. Baltimore product is fouled. 
He was a star in high school for Milford Mill in Baltimore with Chase Cormier. Good program. But the only scholarship offer he received at all was from Grambling. Well, a couple of foul shots for him here. He's only a 50% shooter, 12 out of 24. Well, that brought some rain, didn't it? It did. That was a high arcer. You can't come to Oregon without bringing some rain with you. <laughs> I like that. It's a little something light. Something light. You see Tanner Sanders on the floor for Oregon State. The scholarship player with the football team, walks on with the basketball team. And that's notable because Wayne Tinkle is the kind of coach that will reward good play. If you're in practice, busting your behind, working hard, and being a good teammate, you will then get rewarded. And as a player, you respect that. Because then when coach says something about what the requirements are to get court time, you believe it. Wayne Tinkle, 48 years old, father of three. His parents had eight more kids than that. Wayne Tinkle is the youngest of 11 children. Powering up and in, there's Jarmal Reed. He was strong in that Mississippi State game, too. Really strong. Uh, when Gary Payton II was struggling in that game, only two points in the first half, Jarmal Reed picked it up. And I talked to Jarmal, and he said he's most comfortable playing in that interior. Although he can operate behind the three-point line, he likes using his strong body, and he feels comfortable around the basket, patient, is able to elevate as well. Meantime, a ninth turnover for Grambling State. Twice this year, they've had 15 in one half, and they're kind of trending towards that again tonight. That suffocating Oregon State defense, that's the new hallmark, and something the rest of the Pac-12 is going to have to get used to seeing. <laughs> Beavers fans, you see another poor offensive execution. I mean, if I'm Oregon State at some point, I might have a transition basket, and, and I pull the ball back just to purposely work on half-court execution. But Victor Robbins, he's catching it wide open, feet set. He's ready to let it go. Robbins drains a couple of threes. The team now has a half a dozen that matches a season high. Now, there's 7.40 to go in the first half. Cormier trying to create, lost his footing. They're going to call a foul. Now, Gary Payton the second. We talked about how he's been Mr. Everything. And this time, driving and dishing it. And helping to make it 28 to 9. Jill Savage will have your State Farm halftime report in just a little bit. Wayne Tinkle, coach of these Oregon State Beavers, wired for sound, although not tonight. All you need to hear tonight is, hey, good job, guys. That's right. Way to go. Pac-12 Sports Report get you updated on everything going on. The new AP poll is out. The Washington Huskies have shot up in the ranks. How about Washington State? Ernie Kent out to a four and six start, going a little bit better for Conzo Martin at Cal, obviously, at nine and one. Yeah, you know, Conzo Martin's done a terrific job following the Hall of Fame coach Mike Montgomery. Tyrone Wallace playing like a player of the year, 19 points per game, uh, right under 10 rebounds. Game winning still and dunk versus Wyoming. 26 points in the second half versus Nevada. And for Ernie Kent, you're, you're trying to change a, a culture and a style of play. Washington State was one of the more slower tempo teams in the entire country last season. And this year, they're trying to be one of the faster teams. So that kind of thing takes time. It's a process similar to the process. Wayne Tinkle is going through here with Oregon State. You talk about a team that was flat out terrible defensively right. last few years. And now they're one of the best. Well, they have forced Grambling State into this ratio. You ready for this? Assist to turnovers tonight. 1 to 11. Oof. That's not good, is it? Is that bad? <laughs> no, it's not. 11, 11 turnovers, 1 assist for Grambling State. But again, that's a tip of the cap to Oregon State. And, and, we, and we don't expect Grambling State to win this game, but they want to be a lot more competitive in this game. And, and if that doesn't change, if that ratio doesn't improve... Well, and am I wrong, or maybe chucking up more than eight shots in the entire first half might help, right? You're, you're right about that, too. That's a held ball. Grambling State will get it back. Now, we talked a little bit to their coaching staff before the game, and they were trying to, to put in a bunch of intricate things, they said. It didn't quite take. Everybody's still getting to know each other, so they're trying to simplify it, is what they told us. And, you know, it's very easy to armchair quarterback, but you'd figure the easiest thing to do is just let them go shoot. Uh, you know, as simple as it sounds, that's kind of what they have to resort to doing because they're not going to get a whole lot of good looks versus Oregon State, especially 
those possessions when Oregon State's really locked in. You see even that shot, well contested by Daniel Gomez at the end. So if I'm Grambling State, I'm taking the first available good look. And again, credit to the Beavers, the way they play now. They just don't give the opposition very many good looks. Gomez twisting, missing. And in the open court, boy, coming away with it is Reed. Good hustle there. Gomez looking for Reed. And Reed is hacked with nine on that shot clock. Beavers have only been to the line once tonight. That was the and one for Gary Payton the second. Yeah, Gary Payton the second on the bench. Langston the Morris Walker on the bench, but he's going to check in now. When you look at this lineup for the Beavers. Not a whole lot of shooters out there. You have some slashers with Reed. DeVivier's knocked down a few shots. Robbins is actually knocked down some shots here and shooting confidently. Well, and the Beavers are 11 out of 17 from the field right now at 65%. Grambling State is 2 out of 9. Yeah, and, and so maybe right now Wayne Tinkle just experimenting with different lineups. Mm -hmm. That's what non-conference is about, especially these kind of games. Is experimenting with different lineups, uh, you know, trying different things defensively, seeing who could do what because it's going to get serious in a couple weeks. Well, it, it is such a strong Pac-12. Yeah. You, you, I mean, it's no longer the way Oregon State has come out, even Washington State, mm -hmm. because some of their players are starting to emerge. Even what you thought might be the bottom of the conference is super competitive, it's competitive. right now. It's great word to, to utilize because that's the thing is a team like Oregon State, you look at what they lost, the Pac-12's leading scorer from last year, Roberto Nelson, three seniors who, in terms of leadership, uh, played a huge role. Two guys going to professional leagues and the transfer house cook that I already spoke about. You, you didn't expect... Oregon State to be this competitive this early. To the baseline, that's going to be an offensive foul going against Richard Freeman, trying to make something happen. Freeman able to beat Reed somewhat off the bounce, but look at that help defense from Daniel Gomez. And that takes discipline for a big guy. Don't try to block everything. Sometimes you need to take a charge, stand your feet. And he did just that. But when I hear Reed and Grambling, I think Willis Reed <laughs> of the New York Knicks. Old school. In the, in the 60s and 70s. And, you know, it's a great allegory for the, the younger fans that are watching, if they don't know, the, the 1970 NBA Finals. Knicks and Lakers, Game 7. He had a... a a torn muscle in his thigh. It's grambling product Willis Reed. And just going out into the layup line, everybody went bonkers. Like, oh my gosh, yeah. he's actually going to play. And he scored the first four points. Walt Frazier took over from there. But Willis Reed, got to be the most famous grambling state basketball player. I think so. Got all kinds of football talent that they've had go through there. But with Reed, what an iconic moment, right? When he came back out of that tunnel. Duvivier, who had the hot hand early. A rolling basketball picked up, kicked out. Peyton, rainbow, no. And the Tigers run the floor with nine points for the night. Looking for 12. Not happening. They shoot 25% from beyond the arc. Duvivier blocked. So don't think twice about that one next time. Good job. Contestant, good move from DeVivier. Nice job to avoiding the charge on the baseline. A great help defense from Grambling. Reed checks out, and the fans appreciate his effort. And back comes a Shoftenar now, the junior. Now DeVivier and Payton, the guard combo right now. I like how they're moving the ball, huh? That's how they play. They share the basketball. You know, they, Gomez with the miss, but he will draw the foul. You know, sometimes you're forced to play that way when you don't have one dominant player coming into the season that can be a one-on-one -on -one isolation type guy. You, you have to rely on your teammates. And Olaf Schaftenar said it. One of the taller guys on the team, but one of the best passers as well. He's able to see over the top and, and drop that ball into Daniel Gomez. Gomez regaining his health. And finding his confidence since the first week of the season with an injured shoulder. Of course, that's nothing compared to the, the broken leg. Yeah. One of the most grateful student athletes you'll ever speak to. He's just happy to be out on the court. And, and I mean, that's what you see. People go through things in life and 
it makes you appreciate what you maybe didn't appreciate as much as you should have when you first had it. He's an amazing story. Fluent in five languages. Yep. Found part-time work teaching grade school kids French, which is an official language back in his native Senegal. Timeout called here by a frustrated Grambling State coach, Sean Walker. With 4.35 to go in this first half, and Grambling State twice this year has failed to get past 15 points in the first half. And they're kind of veering into that territory now. This could very easily be the third time. That's what Oregon State does. You know, winning is not enough for them. They go back and look at possessions, and they set goals. You know, we want to hold this team to X amount of points, and I'm sure Wayne Tinkle and his staff in these huddles, they're saying, hey, fellas, next four minutes, we're not giving up another five points. All right, so is this a goal? Keep it under two dozen and <laughs> join this list from this millennium? Why not? You have a chance to set records. You know, why not? They, they just, they might do it. I'll put you on the map a little bit. Yeah, People would pay would. attention to that. So 23, you keep it under 23. Now, you, you think that this game will loosen up a bit, especially looking into the second half. Maybe Oregon State takes a few possessions off defensively, which is natural. That's what they want to stay away from, but it happens, and if Grandpa State's able to sneak some baskets then, but if Oregon State is serious about it and they lock in and their goal is we want to keep you under 24, why not? Shot clock runs out on them. So they stay at nine, and again, they've taken only 10 shots the entire first half. And in modern-day basketball, that's, to quote from the Princess Bride, that's inconceivable. In modern day, old day, any day. You have to shoot the ball. Four starters on the floor right now for the Beavers. Alley-oop didn't quite work out. But the fans were ready to, to really dig it if it went down. That's a designed play. I told you, Malcolm Duvivier is about as athletic as any PG in the conference. The screen from Olaf Shaftenar frees Duvivier up for a second. And then Shaftenar's defender tries to go in and help on the play. It's a little late. and gets a foul. Six team fouls on the Tigers. And under four to play now in this very defensive-minded first half here in Corvallis. They collapse on Peyton. Looks for the open man. Shoftenar hook shot goes. I like when they run Peyton to the post. You allow him to play point guard from the block. And sometimes it's easier to play from the block than the top of the key because defense comes down and you're looking out at everything. You have options after the double team. Somebody's automatically open. You just have to locate who that is and then make the right pass. Contested shot. They will keep it right down here. Being a point guard, you won't have options. And when this double team comes to Gary Payton II, he has his big man, Olaf Schaftenar, our flash. State Farm Halftime Report coming up very soon with Jill Savage. A lot to tell you about. And here tonight in Corvallis, it has been all Beavers against Grambling State, leading 33-9. to Gary Payton II has done his usual great work. There's the banner for senior. 25 years ago, almost to the date, he was in a game that went 117 to 113 in this arena. That was Loyola Marymount that came in here oh, yeah. with Bo Kimball, right, and the late Hank Gatters. offense. 117 will not be a number we'll see here tonight. Okay. No, I don't think so. It's not going that way. But what we might see tonight is a triple-double from Gary Payton II. His dad is the only Ooh. person who has a triple-double right now. That's the, the only game where Senior had double-digit rebounds, right? Yeah. Was that triple-double? Yeah, double? and right now, Gary Payton II with six rebounds, five points, seven assists. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to get at least four more rebounds before this thing is over. And the way Oregon State's playing defense and getting out of transition, and the way Payton's been passing already, you see him getting those three assists. You want a quadruple-double with the steals? Because he's starting to, I, to go I, down I'm, that I'm, path, he, too. I'm telling you, I want to put it past him. Isn't that funny? The, the thing he's got the fewest of is points right now. That one goes the and one. 
Daniel Gomez having a very strong effort tonight. Gomez showed some of that in their last game against Mississippi State. You know, early in the season uh, against lesser competition, you know, some people thought, well, maybe he can't score on the block once he starts playing against bigger guys. But when he did it against Mississippi State, then you see, hey, this guy can actually play at this level. And he's making moves now, not just a guy that's a recipient of drives and kicks to the lane, but you could throw it down something, he'll make a nice move. Shine committed the foul, that's his second, and we should note that Torrey Shine is coming off a 28-point game for Grambling State. He has not scored in this game tonight, which again is all about the, the Beaver defense. Three-point play for Daniel Gomez. And Oregon State quadrupling up Grambling State right now. Robert Wiley, the new point guard. Another turnover. Actually a foul here off the ball. I'm going to get that on Kyle Williams. You see the work from Gomez again. We saw him operate on the offensive end, now defensively. Fight in the post, doing his work early. When you do the work early, I mean, it's a life lesson. It's just like school. You know, you do your school work early, you have the evenness to yourself. In basketball, you do that post defense early. Then, once the retaliation takes place, the ref sees that rather than you continue to try to fight with the offensive player. Good job from Daniel Gomez. Good find. Boy, what an impressive showing from Oregon State tonight. Obviously, they are out in Manning and Grambling. You, you really feel for the Tigers. You, you just do. Yeah, but, but, but you still have to hit your shots, and they're doing that tonight. Oregon State, they, they require double teams because of what Shafton are and Gomez have established in the paint. And then it just is a matter of finding the open guy. And Victor Robbins really coming along. Looking to force a 16th turnover of the half, they did it. It's one assist to 16 turnovers is what Grambling has right now. Some of that is self-inflicted. Some of that is Oregon State has that shrink wrap defense. Underneath, Shoftenar, no. Good pass, good intent from Gomez, but maybe that's a pass he throws without having to take that dribble. That's a foul before... The run through the lane at that time from a Jeffkins Adjaman. Reed picks up the foul his first. So with 1.36 to go in the opening half, the question is, will Oregon State allow double digits in the, the point total? I wouldn't be surprised if they set a goal saying we want to keep them under 10 for the half. It was with about nine minutes left on the clock that Grambling State hit its last field goal. They are two of 11 from the field. As we talked, Gary Payton, go back to him a little bit, 25 years ago, Sports Illustrated said, it's you, my man. You are the best player in all of college basketball. Well, he had the numbers. His team's won. He was impressive. He had moments, big games at the right time on big stages. Got a reach-in foul here on Robert Wiley. Uh, and, you know, you've told the story. I think people here in Corvallis certainly know it, too, that Gary Payton II was once told by Dad, well, I don't know if, if the Pac-12 is quite your speed, son, but turns out it is. You know how it is with competitors. You tell them that they can't do something, they're going to work and strive to achieve that. And not only has Gary Payton II made it to this level, but... He's a star at this level. I well, mean, he, he could play on any other roster in this conference, and he could probably start sure. on more than half of them. Transferred in from Salt Lake Community College. And the one thing he does that his dad never did is rebound. I mean, yeah. He is really rebounding. He's fourth in the conference, and he's six foot three. He's talked about that. Kind of just has a knack for it. You know, as soon as the shot goes up, he's able to read where the ball's going. And some guys, some guys just do that well. Nothing's going right for Grambling State. They got Julian Stengel on the floor now to the Beavers, a seldom used player. He just got knocked off the ball. Reed battles to keep it hot. They just might hold Grambling State to single digits here in the first half. And to me, the remarkable thing is the Tigers have only tried 12 shots. I 
mean, I'll tell you, Josh, I've seen Oregon State play a lot the last few years, and yeah, I even have to get used to some of the defensive efforts you're seeing. They're flying around. They're all over the place. They're rotating to the right spots. They're communicating. No, you can tell it's a real point of pride. Yeah, you can. You can, and that comes straight from Wayne Tinkle and his staff. I mean, that's their philosophy. We're going to defend. We're going to rebound. And you hear a lot of coaches talk about that and speak about it theoretically. But how many coaches really abide by it? How many coaches are willing to take their best player out of the game if he doesn't provide the right defensive rotation? Wayne Tinkle is that guy. And again, it gets the respect of the players when they see that you practice what you preach. Grambling State just trying to perform some cosmetic surgery on the scoreboard here. Just make this look a little better. A little nip and tuck to get it up into double digits here. 17 turnovers, one assist. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. I, I haven't. Got a foul off the ball here. Oregon State foul number 40, Justin Stangle. Stangle picks it up. That's his first. And still one to give here. Yeah. So I won't even get to the, to the line and, and try to get to 10 off of that. You have to be careful on these baseline out of bounds, though. Some guys, when you're struggling to score in your half-court set, the best thing that can happen for you is a whistle's blown and you get to take the ball out on the baseline. Now we talked about Oregon State committing fully to the concept of pressure defense. I would dare say a nine-point first half from the opponent will drive home that point very well. Do not adjust your set. <laughs> Oregon this, State by 32 at the break. Uh, it, this is about as impressive as it gets. They are uh, the better team than Grambling State, but the way that they're flying around, the activity on the defensive end is impressive. The only question now, I suppose, is will we see history here tonight? Will there be a record low indoors? 41 to 9 at the break. All Oregon State, 41 to 9 is the correct score. Now, if you're an Oregon State football fan, let me take you back 14 years. That was the identical score of the Fiesta Bowl win for Oregon State with Chad Johnson and the Ken Simonton, right, against Notre Dame. Good one. Some of these fans, that guy does not remember that. But a lot of these <laughs> Oregon State fans will always remember 41 to 9 against Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl. Jonathan Smith, right, the quarterback. Yeah. And this is a little different. This is Grambling State on the basketball court, but that unlikely score is right there for you. And in Oregon State's last game, we actually had new Oregon State football coach Gary Anderson yeah. join us. And a lot of excitement uh, about his arrival. Really similar to what you saw when Wayne Tinkle came in. You know, guys with a resume, with a history, very well respected in their sporting community. Well, it's a great time for athletics, college athletics in this state right now. Obviously, there's a Heisman winner in Eugene. There's a block shot for Gomez. And it's taken right back away by Cormier. Scoring opportunity for Grambling. Not quite yes, but they're close. Valerio Alltimer will go to the line. When they get numbers, they have to attack. Oregon State foul number 14, Daniel Gomez. Gomez picks up his second. Second team foul. Now, Oregon State obviously looking to get out to 7-2 and two on the basketball court. And barring a complete apocalypse, that, that is going to happen here tonight. First point since about nine minutes left in the first half for the Tigers. And I got to tell you, Oregon State, they lost to Division II Western Oregon team in their exhibition game earlier this season and I'm sure a lot of Beavers fans did not see them opening up their season six and two and from time to time Wayne Tinkle will remind his team of that loss whenever there's some slippage in practice you know the attention span starts to decrease and those guys remember that they don't want to feel that again they got humbled and since then they've been working hard and working with a purpose had that shot gone in, that would have been another assist for Peyton. It did not. So the quadruple double watch is on <laughs> yeah, pause right now. We're, we're tracking those numbers. I, I think the only way he doesn't get it, at least a triple double, 
is if he doesn't play enough minutes. Right. Fourth foul, by the way, on Kyle Williams. And Duvivier sinks the first of two free throws. Again, as we track Peyton, of all things, uh, the category that's lagging right now is points. Rebounds, assists, and steals all have the jump. Well, he'll do that. He had two points in the first half against Mississippi State and ended the game with 13. It doesn't take him long to run a few baskets off. So impressive, Gary Payton the second. If you're looking for him on Twitter, you won't find him. He is the only player on this team that is not on Twitter. Even his coach is at Wayne Tinkle, but Payton doesn't want the distraction. Low-key guy. You got to love that. You just mentioned Marcus Mariota, the Heisman winner. Same deal for him. Yeah. Not a social media guy. He goes to school. It's a business type trip for him every day. Go to class. Go to, go to school. Go to the court. Work on your craft. Reach in foul on Gomez. Third team foul already. So Grambling State at least getting a bit more aggressive. They're starting to draw some contact. These poor Tigers have had halftime deficits this year of 47 to 15, 37 to 15. And the coup de gras was tonight at 41 to 9. You might have to break down coup de gras for yeah, yeah, me. I can't uh, spell I, it, but... Yeah, I mean, I'm, well. I'm, I know some people that's watching this thinking the same thing. How about Coupe de Ville? I, I got to be the one to say Coupe de Ville, and I know that. Coeur I know that, too. <laughs> Off the ball, got a whistle. And now they're calling it a little bit closer here in the second half. That foul goes on Shine. Good officiating crew led by... Veteran official Dave Hall. Langston Morris Walker, a very quiet night so far on the court here. Grambling State, they're in that 2 3 zone, but they keep running two guys oh. at the basketball with how well Oregon State's passing and, and shooting. Now 8 of 11 from 3. Timeout taken by Grambling State for Duvivier. It's 13 points, the most he's had since the first game of the year. And it is all Oregon State tonight against Grambling. Well, Lamar, we've been talking about what's happening in Eugene. And congratulations, obviously, to Marcus Mariota. And congratulations were sent out from an unlikely source, the Oregon State Beavers. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of Beaver fans that took exception to that because around here you're not supposed to be friendly with the Oregon Ducks. But I got to tell you, I love what Oregon State did there. Not only is Marcus Mariota deserving of the praise from Oregon State, just out of respect, but from everybody. You know, too few times, not only in college athletics, but in professional sports, do we forget to honor the guys that are supposed to be honored and put the guys on a pedestal who are supposed to be on a, the ones who properly utilize mm -hmm. that stage. And Marcus Mariota is, I mean, I have experience. I took a group of kids from my youth organization to go visit him in the University of Oregon. We do visits around different colleges. And this guy took 30 minutes out of his time to play a pickup football game with him. Just one of the most outstanding student athletes you'll ever meet. And for that, we should honor him. Lonnie McIlwain will go to the line and hear that foul on Gomez, his third. Your organization is awesome, by the way. Oh, thank you. You know, they, that, that's what it's all about. You know, guys like Marcus Mariota are the kind of guys we want our kids to look up to. And if I'm the University of Oregon, I'll take a step further. I'm putting a statue of that guy outside of my stadium. Well, the way I look at it, and I know this is just kind of talk show fodder, but if the Red Sox can honor Derek Jeter, yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, exactly. Oregon State can step up to the plate. And I mean, we might as well end this discussion because I can go on and on because, you know, far too often we wait till things go wrong before we address them. And here you have somebody in Mariota who kids, people can look up to. Again, I can't say enough good things about him. Gomez dumps it off and the Tigers rip it away. Grambling at one point had a 5-0 run in this game, believe it or not. That's going to go against Grambling here. I'll take you back to football. 
And, well, what do you think? Because Oregon will hunker down and get ready here. Oh, I think uh, I think Oregon beats Florida State. I, I think, uh, again, with Mariota, best player in the country, I think he leads them to a victory. I think Alabama wins that game against Ohio State and then for their championship, not sure. Got to see how the semifinals play out. You know, but one thing, Josh, that I'm going to be looking forward to is seeing how much does Mariota run now. You don't have to protect him anymore. Right. The last two games of the season, you can really cut him loose. That would be interesting to see. My partner originally from Big 12 country. We know the TCU and Baylor did not get in. Yeah. The people down there are not happy about that. Foul underneath is Morris. Walker took it in strong. I will say this about TCU, by the way, and Washington State knows this because they ran into that TCU basketball buzzsaw already. Football had a great year for TCU. Basketball, one of very few undefeated teams right now. There are two Pac-12 teams that are still undefeated right now. Yeah, for TCU, Trent Johnson, the former Stanford coach. Now TCU doing a good job there. And the two teams in the Pac-12, you talked about Arizona, Washington. Here's your look at the undefeated teams in Division One right now. Yeah, Arizona very easily could finish the non-conference undefeated. Their toughest test remaining, in my opinion, is at UTEP. I think Tim Floyd does a good job getting his teams ready to play there. It'll be a hostile environment. It's right before the Christmas break, so if you're UTEP, you're hoping you catch an unfocused Arizona squad looking towards a Christmas break. I doubt that'll happen because Sean Miller has his guys ready to play. They know what's at stake. And Kentucky's got to deal with UCLA coming up. All right, 19 turnovers to one assist oh, for wow. Grambling, and there's Peyton getting closer to that triple-double. He's a regular on hashtag 12 best because of things like that. You could see when he caught that ball, the way he did down, he was going to do something emphatic. That score is correct at 49 to 12. Beaver defense. And before the steal, got a foul called. Guys who, who dunk. They know what it looks like when the guy's about to go up into a highlight play. We'll get a chance to see Gary Payton in the seconds, but you could tell as soon as he caught that ball, the way he dipped down, he's going to rise up. Already more fouls whistled on Oregon State here in the first four minutes of this half. They entered the first 19 minutes of that first half. Field goals are not dropping for the Tigers. They are two out of 15 for the game. Well, right now, they're just playing one-on-one -on -one basketball, and that's that's not going to work out well for them. Now, they turn it over for a 20th time to one assist, and that's why you've got a, an annoyed-looking coach over there in Sean Walker. As we talk about Gary Payton, senior, and we mention a, a turnover-to-assist ratio that goes completely inside-out like that, that just uh, that doesn't quite compute. Not at all. You know, when you're limited offensively, you could be the best coach in the world, draw up the best plays, have the best action, but if you don't have a guy that can put the ball in the basket, then all that stuff is irrelevant. Here's where they have to attack. You have to get a shot up. And they do. They've got their third field goal of the game. It's pretty nice looking play all the way down. Good job running their break. Looked like they had a four on two, four on three. Ball handler took it until a defender committed himself to stopping him, made the right pass, and they got the finish. And a timeout on the floor. Oregon State, though, is still leading very comfortably. And we'll show you a little Gary Payton, the second on the catch. You can see him dip down and then rise up. 12 basketball brought to you by Panera Bread. And now order online for rapid pickup at PaneraBread.com. Well, we mentioned pretty much right off the jump tonight, we have our thumb on the record books tonight just to see where Oregon State would go. One thing I didn't think we'd necessarily veer towards is the, the talk of a triple-double, if not a quadruple-double, for Gary Payton the second, His dad, the only beaver ever with a triple-double. Nobody's ever had a quadruple. You came pretty close to a triple one time, didn't uh, you? Yeah, well, you got to bring up old stuff, man. Well. <laughs> it was, a, it was a, a game of civil war. Ended up with 13 points and 10 assists and seven rebounds. Had I known, 
I was only three rebounds away, then I would have stole some from some of my teammates. <laughs> Nobody told me. That ball paddled out of bounds, and we'll keep it right here. 15 to shoot, and 15-15 to go in the basketball game here. Well, that would be a, a, another thing just to, to link the Paytons together. If, yep. if Gary Payton the second can come up with the second ever triple-double in school history. I think he'll do it. Because he just does so many things. He plays a lot of minutes. He plays the most minutes in the Pac-12. Missed out on a free rebound right there. Duvivier knocked it away, but it'll go right back to Grambling. A lot of slapping, a lot of contact. Michael Duvivier wanting the foul. Looks like his arm did get raked. Referees want them to play on. Just to update Peyton, it's seven points right now. Seven assists, eight rebounds. I thought he had a sixth steal, but they're, they're still listing five. Grambling, which had nine points at the half. At least getting some more shots away here in the second half. That was a great defense from Jarmar Reed. Did a good job moving his feet, didn't have foul. Got pushed off a little bit and then was able to gather and still contest the shot. Jay Njai comes in now. And a Shoftenar will take a seat. Well, defensively, you got to be a Beaver believer right about now. They came in top 10 in the country in scoring defense, and it'll only go down from here. You know, I always go with the eye test on things because numbers don't always tell the whole story. You know, you talk about a team holding an opponent. As we see, another basket from Grambling. Yep, that's Adjaman that takes it in. You talk about teams holding opponents to a certain field goal percentage, but sometimes it doesn't list, well, who was the competition? Right. You know, who might not have been playing in that game? All these different variables. But the thing I keep going back to, which is amazing to me, three opponents already have been held under 30% from the field. They didn't happen one time in the last two seasons. I mean, that's... We're still here. We're in the ninth game of the of the season. Yeah, and they're about to do it again. Yeah. Grambling's at 22% tonight. Up and in goes Victor Robbins. And the foul as well. That's eight for Robbins. Victor Robbins, a kid that played for the Compton Magic AAU program run by Eight Tope. You know him on a first name basis along the West Coast. One of the better AAU guys out there. Victor was one of his players and you know, he, he had a lot of confidence in Victor choosing Oregon State. It felt like a summer that he could really thrive. And Victor didn't do that early on. And Victor talked about this year with Coach Tinkle. Now as his coach, he feels he has a longer leash. He has the ability to make some mistakes and play through them because he know, knows Coach Tinkle and the entire staff believes in him. Victor's Twitter handle, by the way, is Basket Robbins. He, Cute, right? He, he, knew, <laughs> he knew he was going to get buckets. <laughs> 52 to 16, and now Cormier slashing, couldn't get the roll. Good hit ahead. Robbins takes it, and he couldn't get it to go with the foul. Well, Victor Robbins starting to emerge now. He's coming off a one out of seven game this past weekend, but happier returns tonight. I like him getting out and running. And when you know Peyton will throw that pass, which he's already done several times in this game, that hit ahead, it's an incentive for his teammates to get out and run. First one goes. And again, talking defense, Wayne Tinkle was all about that at Montana, too. I mean, those are the numbers and those attributes defensively toughness together discipline that's what Wayne Tinkle preaches and and his team is bought in and it's easy for young guys to buy in to a plan when they see the success they're able to have with it Peyton would have had a ninth assist by the way had that runner actually <laughs> dropped so he holds it eight with nine boards and seven points Adjaman denied but a foul well, that's one adjustment that certainly Grambling has made. You can tell that they are much more aggressive here in the second half than the first. They've gotten a few whistles, too, so they see that if they put the ball on a deck with a purpose, then they may get a call. 
Staten Island product, Jeffkins Adjaman at the line, a freshman. It was actually going to go to Elizabeth City State, which is where Sean Walker was going to be the coach. Had been for 13 years, but then his phone rang and got the offer to go to Grambling. And he scrambled to take a couple of players with him from ECSU, and that's one of them. You like that because you want your recruits in the future to know that story and know that you're playing for a coach that's worth following. And from Staten Island to Grambling, yeah, Louisiana, long way. that's, that's long way. a little culture shock, but coach of saves dealing with it fine. You know, we were talking earlier, too, about Robbins, and there was a little bit of a, a culture adjustment to make as well. Victor Robbins talks openly about getting away from the, the trouble of Compton back in L.A. Marvels at how in a place like Corvallis, everyone approaches everyone else in a friendly manner. He says, back home, if someone's approaching you, it's bad news. Here it's just to say hello, you know? You know, I said the same thing. I came out of Houston and, you know, not a, a neighborhood like Compton in the least bit, but... You know, people there tend to just keep to themselves, mind their own business. And here, I mean, as soon as you get to the airport, right? you got people telling you, hello, you wear an Oregon State jacket. People are telling you, hello, they're yelling, go Beavs. When you're walking around, it's just a real friendly environment. This whole area is so welcoming. It really is. Grambling State not feeling so welcome tonight, but they're starting to score a little bit here. At least they're up past 20 now. Good shot, but you can make the point. Oregon State gave them that basket. A double team really for no reason allowed that shooter to get open. And as crazy as it sounds, Josh, Wayne Tinkle's going to point that out yeah. in film session because, again, he looks at every possession. He don't care about the score and what's going on there. It's how did we get to this score? Last in the conference in scoring defense last year, so far first this season. And Langston Morris Walker talked about that, how it's new for him this year to hear coach after a game. The team is in the locker room celebrating about a win, and coach says, that's, that's great, but let's talk about some of these breakdowns we had. Outlet Robbins can take it, and he will. He's shaking his head. I'm not sure if he got the kind of lift he wanted on that. He's known as the most athletic player on the team. Maybe he wants to give the fans a little bit more. 20-second turnover for Grambling tonight. And they draw yet another foul with under 12 to play now. And Grambling State to within. 58 to 21. State Farm game summary. We're still monitoring Gary Payton the second, trying to join dear old dad as the only Oregon State Beaver ever with a triple double. That happened four years before Gary Payton the second was born. It happened 1988, right around Thanksgiving. It was right here at Gill Coliseum. 20 points, 14 boards, 11 assists for dad that night. Richard Freeman and, and I keep wanting to say junior. It's not. There is actually a Gary Payton one. Jr. This is Gary Payton the second. But he is inching towards history here tonight. If not tonight, he'll get it. And I think he'll get it this season. Now, the one thing that will not be working in his favor, a lot of contact there. That's well, they give him credit for a rebound there is yeah. my question because that would put him to 10 of those. So he'd have the first box checked. Yep. Both teams already in the bonus. Oregon State in the double bonus. They do indeed make it uh, a 10 rebound night for Gary Payton the second. All right, and now he can get from seven points to nine. He is the team's leading free throw shooter as well at 82 percent expect him to knock these down but as I was saying I think the thing that will not work in his favor is at some point especially conference play teams are going to start game planning for him they're going to try to take him out of games and force right. other people to beat him 
Is that, is that what's going to make Arizona, for example, so tough this year? Because, yeah, I mean, you can body down on, on Johnson if you want to, I guess, but there are other guys that can beat you. Well, that, that's one of the many things that will make Arizona tough. You can't double-team anybody there, but you have to because Ashley will punish you in the post. Stanley Johnson, I think he doesn't post up enough with, with how big he is and the advantage he has against defenders. Uh, but he's evolving. Tarzuski, when he's a sort right. of... Boy, 83% shooter, and he misses to heighten the drama here. <laughs> this is almost like a gin rummy hand that he has right now. 7, 8, 9, 10. With steals being in the mix here for a uh, quadruple double. We shall see. We will. At the half, it was 41 to 9. A more aggressive Grambling State team in the second half, chopping that lead down a bit. At least getting the, the scoreboard to not look so funny. This is the kind of possession they had in the first half, though, right? Very deliberate. Yep, Oregon State doing a good job staying in front. The switching screens. One to shoot. Banked long, and there's Duvivier with the rebound. Carries it through and he's hammered from behind. That'll be four fouls now on Adjaman. Good move from DeVivier. Strong. Got to the paint. Tucked the basketball away like a football running back. Now DeVivier will get a chance to work on some free throws now. Kid that grew up in Toronto wanting to be the next Vince Carter. Says everyone in Toronto for a while wanted to be the next Vince Carter. Everyone everywhere wanted to be the next Vince Carter. I was in Texas wanting to be the next Vince Carter. That's a good point. We'll never forget that dunk contest when he came out in the 360 windmill. Right. I mean, he gave dunk contests a whole new standard. DeVivier has a cheering section back in Toronto. Lots of family members. His mom, who he's very close with. Talks about their childhood growing up together. Now he's got a 14-point night tonight. Robbins is game high with 18. Poked away. Another turnover for Grambling State. And Reed will throw it down. The big fella can get up. Aggressive switch on the screen. He read that play. Perfectly. 16 steals in this game for Oregon State. And Reed hobbling. Not sure if he came down. He's asking for a sub now. Yeah. And still comes <laughs> up with a steal. <laughs> steal number 17. That's a ton of those. And sure enough, they want time out here so they can get Reed looked at. A 40-point lead for Oregon State. After the, the screen took place, you see Oregon State's been switching, but Reed aggressively switches that one. Reads that, goes for the ball. Can't really see where he got hurt. And maybe what, he went up too high? Came down too hard, not really sure. Wednesday on Pac-12 Networks. You check out what's happening here. Your New York Life pregame show will get it going. You've got Loyola, Marymount, and Stanford to follow. And then Oregon welcomes CSUN. It used to be Cal State Northridge or Grambling State having to deal with those Huskies of Washington. That's coming up on Wednesday. And you see Reed done for the night. Uh, I want to see where that happened. Up. Couldn't even tell which leg it was on. I mean, hey, Oregon State's done a good job so far this season with what's considered a depleted roster. But they don't want to start losing guys from what they do have currently. No, not when you're up 42. Under 10 to play. Peyton. Ooh, and that would have been 11 points for the night. Because again, he's very close in a lot of categories right now to getting double figures. I wouldn't be surprised if Oregon State runs their lob play against the zone here. And they try to. Because Peyton. Yeah. 
just didn't have that seam. Duvivier, Payton kicks it out. Great pass. I'll be an assist if it goes, it doesn't. Robinson will back it right back out. Grambling State trying to play zone because they can't guard Oregon State man to man, but now you're giving all these rebounders free lanes. You can hear that ball hit Peyton's fingers. You can hear the pop. Oregon State crowd reacting to it. Peyton gets hammered, and he will go to the line. And again, just to reset it, 10 rebounds, 8 assists. Got a chance to get to 10 points now. And the foul goes against McElwain. That'll be his third. A very athletic Gary Peyton the second. You know, he lettered in swimming as well as hoops in high school. Yeah. Yeah, he said swimming was kind of one of those things he just did. I think he was just good at it. The long arms kind of has a swimmer's body. He's got a shooter's touch, too. Gets that friendly roll. So he gets to 10 points, 10 rebounds. Now it's a race to see well, if indeed he's allowed to continue in this game, first and foremost. Might not. Yeah, I, I don't know. I saw Wayne Tinkle say something to him when he came out. Wasn't sure if it was you're done for the night or I'm going to give you one more shot at it. Yeah, it's kind of tough. Yeah, uh, I mean, you, you know, you because, don't want to pour it yeah, on, right? You, you don't want to pour it on. You don't want him getting hurt in this kind of game. But you have an opportunity to do something special that only your father has done at this university. You want to give the kid the chance to do that. But with, with Peyton, you kind of figure he's going to do it anyway. Right. So it's okay to sit him out the rest of this one. Robbins trying to add to a career night. And a 42-point lead right now for the Beavers. Foul called here as Robert Wiley took it in strong. And it goes on Matt Dolan. And you wonder if indeed the Beavers will now get some players who don't see a lot of time, like Dolan and Tanner Sanders in there. Sanders is in there now. Sure, we'll see those guys, those walk-ons. You know, for for those guys, I believe only one of them will be able to return next season because Oregon State, with the recruiting class they have, a lot of scholarships will be filled, a lot of positions on the team will be filled, and these walk-ons know this could be a one-year deal. But how special of a one-year deal for a group of guys who never thought that they would see playing time at a Division One school, a Pac-12 school at that. Vivier, who's been just completely solid tonight more than anything else. And Robin started that drive. Backing, twisting, and he's got himself a 20-point night. But he can do that. So we've seen him knock down some threes, but he's bigger than most of the defenders that they put on him. So if he's patient, walks his way down to the block, he can get that shot any time. Gray running through the lane and is fouled. With 7.40 to go. So again, Grambling State, which was held to nine in the first half, starting to pile up a few more points in the second, but they are not going to beat the Beavers. Right off the top, we talked Gary Payton the second tonight, but he's got help. Langston Morris Walker, the lead in return and score from last season. Struggling a bit tonight, but that's fine because Victor Robbins came to play. 20 points. Malcolm Duvivier, 14 points, four rebounds, a silent all-around game. And Jarmal Reed, who had 17 points in a season opener, chipping in tonight with eight points. Mark Gray hits a free throw, and he is now team high for Grambling State with five points. If you take away their point guard, Chase Cormier, who's got three assists and three turnovers, the rest of the team, Lamar, no assists and 22 turnovers. Impressive, impressive performance. And Grambling is the inferior opponent, but in Oregon State, 
doing what good teams do. You know, average teams will play this game and look good, but the really, really good teams will put this opponent away quickly, which Oregon State did, and they'll do it in dramatic fashion, which you can say Oregon State has done. Foul is Freeman and takes it up strong. We've learned, by the way, that I guess no surprise here, Jarmal Reed will not return tonight for Oregon State, left with that leg injury. But that's smart, no need for him to return. Richard Freeman goes to the line for Grambling State. Grambling located in north central Louisiana. And certainly more famous for its football team than its basketball. The legendary Eddie Robinson, of course, is a football coach. Helped shape players like Doug Williams and Raiders Hall of Famer Willie Brown, Charlie Joyner, James Harris, Buck Buchanan. It's a heck of hey, a list. Hey, don't let me stop you. No, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> About 20 more, but... Trying to, to make sure that the basketball starts to, to grow back. Yeah. Now they had uh, a winless season just two years ago. Rainbow air ball here. And the Beavers the other way. And they really had to tear the whole thing down and start completely from scratch. Sometimes so. you have to do that. And it's quite a project for Sean Walker. He's got a great attitude, though, the coach for Grambling. Working these guys hard. And you can see evidence of that here as they'll run a two-on-one break. And still not get the bucket. As we say, it's a process. Do Vivier. He's in. That's an assist for Peyton. All right, so, so we get one assist away. Let's see here. 10 points, 11 rebounds, 9 assists. You bet. And there have been two blown layups, by the way, on yeah. passes tonight. So if he doesn't get it, they'll re-rack that tape. That's going to be a held ball. And Oregon State will see if they can get it now to where Peyton brings it up, distributes, and we'll have some history here you know, tonight. I think at this point he knows. You know, a, few, a couple possessions ago when he first checked back in, shot went up, and Peyton's a guy that crashes the glass hard, as is, but, I mean, he, it was like 4-2 in the 40-type speed to get down there and try to grab that rebound. Peyton's dad in 1988, the only triple-double in school history so far. If I'm him, I'm driving, drawing, and telling my teammates, shoot it on the catch, whether you're open or not. Big rebound, Robbins puts it up. <laughs> and it gets wedged as Sanders tried to tip it home. Sanders, a walk-on, who's also on the Beavers football team. One of the very few Pac-12 players who didn't play any AAU ball. Yeah, and he was a good player. As a kid during my time here at Oregon State, I remember doing camps over the summer, and he was a little kid running around. He was always one of the better kids in his age group, has a good IQ for the game, which is why we saw him early in this game, you know, when some of the starters were on the bench. All right, you got to imagine the dad has been tipped off that Gary Payton the second has a shot to go right there in lockstep with your old dad tonight. That one rattling in from Carlton Lowe. He's got five. So imagine how proud of a moment that would be for Gary. One assist away for Gary Payton the second, a triple double. Here comes the bat. Oh, you got to shoot that. Malcolm Duvivier's got to shoot it on the catch. Instead, it's going to be free throw opportunities for Matt Dolan. No clue if these guys know. I, I'm, I'm guessing they don't know, right? I mean, unless somebody you know calls I, them over I and tells always, them. I don't always buy into that because at, the the, the, there's the times, you know, they had a timeout. Well, maybe somebody comes over and tells him. Because then you wonder, you know, what's Peyton doing in the game right now? Yeah, up by 40. <laughs> Dallin, the, the red, uh, red shirt freshman out of Redmond, Oregon, with a miss. It's not always something that players seek, so want to be clear about that. I don't think Peyton is seeking his stats, but you have people, you have managers on the team that keep track of that stuff throughout the game. They can let you know. 
We've talked about the humility of Gary Payton II, and he is. I mean, one of those guys that would, I'm sure, stand there at a podium and deflect it. No, no, wasn't trying, but that's something they can never take away from you if you get it. Yeah. Up strong, two misses that time for Gray. Well, here's, here's the time to do it in transition. One assist away for number one. The kick, and here it is. No, it rimmed out. Tanner Sanders couldn't hit the shot that would have made it a triple-double. Now, for some reason, Gary does not get that 10th assist. You got to believe. <laughs> he's he's going to be going to Tanner Sanders after the game and having a word with him. A little touch foul here on Dolan before the shot. Well, and as we've talked about, and you were on this right at the very beginning of the broadcast tonight, Lamar, it's easy just to say Peyton, 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 Peyton all the time, but Robbins with 20 tonight, Duvivier with 16, Gomez, great defense tonight and scored six points. Reed had a couple of dunks. They've had six different guys this season that have led in scoring or shared as the leading scorer, and that comes from having a team with no egos. You know, there's no guy that you're expecting to be a first-round draft pick in Mitch's NBA draft. They know they have to work together in order to accomplish what they want to accomplish. Duvivier is out. Dolan is out. Livesey comes in now for the first time. All right, and who's going to get the magic bucket to go here? Looking for the assist from uh, Gary Payton II. Uh, I'm going to go with Robbins or Lipsey. He's a good three-point shooter. When Grambling State lays off him, he'll be ready to let it go. Stangle sets that pick. Could it be Stangle? No, he's fouled. You can tell everybody knows. Mike Parker, the voice of the Beavers, a runaway. From here on out, it's about Gary Payton chasing that triple-double. Gary Payton the second, tonight's Barbasol close shave, a player of the game. Still one, one assist away now from that triple-double. Yeah, Josh, doing what he normally does, which is a little bit of everything. The story of the game for the remainder of the game is going to be tracking whether or not he gets that assist already. A couple tries, short dishes to teammates who have either mishandled the ball or gotten fouled now have to go to the line. I think this is going to come in transition. I think that's going to be the easiest way to get it is getting out in an open court. Teammates, shooters like Livesey and Sanders and fanning out to the three-point line and just finding the open shooter. And if the teammates keep missing shots, you know what? He could just grab a few more the steals because <laughs> <laughs> he's close on that one too. Free throw not going here for Stangle. Justin Stangle, playfully called Justin Beaver, since he, you know, plays for Oregon State. It's not because of the hair. No. First career point for him. A little full court pressure. I wouldn't be surprised if the Oregon State coach staff wants to show that to try to speed this game up a little bit and get the ball in Peyton's hands so they can flow in that offensive transition. Oregon State's got a chance to be top three in the nation now in terms of scoring defense. Shot clock down to five. Freeman had it poked away by Peyton. Two to shoot. Another miss. Another offensive board, and then the foul underneath. Good work down there from Carlton Lowe. Oregon State foul on number 40, Justin Stangle. Now the, the free throw attempts are there for Grambling State. This will be the 21st free throw that they've taken tonight. They've made 16 out of 20, so just to get to 30, and it's almost like, thank goodness, they, they get this many opportunities from the line. They've got six field goals for the entire game. Wow. They had two at halftime. Got to credit Oregon State's defense. And that's what it's all about for the Beavers now. Again, it's kind of a, a new world order. Defense first. There's a rebound, which he didn't need, by the way, Peyton. But he gets one anyway. I'm thinking they have a play call. Yeah, get the ball in his hands. That was designed. And there it is. Timeout, Oregon State. 
Payton with the dish. And Gary Payton, the second officially, is there with the second ever Oregon State triple double. Came off of a designed play. You knew Wayne Tinker was going to try to put Payton in the best position to get the assist. He does it, and Victor Robbins finishes it off. Dad, back in 1988. And now he can have a little something to talk about with Dad. I like the decision from Wayne Tinkle and his staff to come together and allow Gary the chance to do that. Whoops. The ball rolling away from A.J. Hedgecock. So the final line tonight, if you will, on Peyton. He's going to come up short of the quadruple double, three steals away from that, but a dozen rebounds. We'll go back to that in a second. Ten assists, ten points. A dozen rebounds for a guy who's six foot three. He had a 16 rebound game last week. He jumps like he's six foot eight. If you don't box him out, and it's one of those 50 50 basketballs in the air, he's as good as anybody in terms of going up to get it. So there you have it. You go back to Thanksgiving of 88 when dad got it done against Portland right here at Gill. And now against Grambling State tonight, Gary Payton the second is there with a 10-12-10. It's the kind of thing you read about, right? You know, his dad comes in here as best player to play at this university. And here's son coming along, who dad isn't even sure if son can play at this level. And then son reaches a feat that only dad reached. Dad, of course, was the glove. And some have cleverly called Gary Payton the second the mitten which he does not like. Correct. He doesn't like it. He wants maybe, to, maybe call him the triple-double. He wants to carve his own path, right? So, you know, find something else to to call me, he suggests. And I, I, I like that. I respect that. I, I know some guys whose fathers were professionals, legends in their own rights, and, you know, guys who have struggled as adults now to find their own identity. And for Gary Payton II to realize that at such a young age that I know what my dad accomplished, and I respect it, but I want to be my own person. Pretty whistle-happy second half yeah, here. I would say. <laughs> there are only 12 fouls the two teams combined in the first half. And it looks like we're up to around 30 of them here in the second half. Well, and as Oregon State, as we talk about carving paths and doing something just a little bit different, Kind of a 1A, if you will. You know, just a little tangent. It's all defense now. That's what people are talking about around here. And as you know better than anybody, that, that's not always been that way. It's weird. It really is. It's weird to see the same guys who played last year who were some of the worst defensive guys, not just in this conference, in the country, be now some of the best. And the way they communicate, the way they're rotating, it's, it's about attention to detail. And, and that's what Wayne Tinkle and his entire staff preaches. There's Stengel. Oh, and the Tigers have a chance to get to 40. I'm sure something they'd like to, to have in their pocket as they get ready to go up to Seattle and take on the Huskies. They're at 39 now. 30 of those in the second half. Well, well good luck to them in Seattle because as I mentioned earlier, Washington Huskies, when they get in their 2-3 zone, the length of that thing might be the biggest 2-3 zone other than Arizona and maybe Utah when they go big with their front line. No, Grambling has actually outscored Oregon State now in the second half. But that 41-9 thing kind, that of, kind of doomed <laughs> the Tigers after the first 20 minutes. And that's what the Beavers will remember about this one tonight, other than the triple-double. Is how they held an opponent to nine in the first half. The next game for Oregon State will not be this easy against the Paul, the Paul team that beat Stanford earlier this season. A good Stanford team. So Oregon State, after this game, they got to go back to the drawing board, shore up on certain things. Remember, early in this game, although they had a pretty hefty lead, their half-court execution wasn't necessarily the best. Right. A lot of points came off of transition, but. Executing in the half court is something they need to continue to improve upon. 
In the meantime, nine games in here, Lamar, only once has an Oregon State opponent gotten to 70 points on him, and that was Auburn with 71. Tonight, they're on 71. And the Beavers will get win at number seven against just two losses. Seconds are ticking away in kind of an excruciating manner here. <laughs> Want to make sure nobody gets hurt at this point. Now Wayne Tinkle, a lot to be excited about with him being in charge now. Formerly in charge of that highly successful University of Montana program. Coming into this season for him, it wasn't going to be about wins and losses. I don't think uh, very many people expected them to win. Of course, you desire that, but you have to be realistic considering the things that they lost and the normal transition that takes place when a new coach comes on board. But, you know, I was talking to Coach Greg Gottlieb, the Oregon State assistant, before the game, and I told him, you guys might have spoiled fans a little bit because you've raised the expectancy bar quite a bit where... People thought you're you maybe going to be an easy out for the majority of the Pac-12 teams, but now I think people are expecting you guys to be competitive. Well, they were completely dominant in the first half, and they sailed to a win tonight behind a triple-double from Gary Payton II. Just a great night for Gary Payton II, for his teammates that were a part of this night. It's something that he will never forget, his teammates will never forget, and even the fans who were here to enjoy this moment will never forget. Once again, the final tonight, 71-43, to as the Beavers get to 7-2 and for the year. For Lamar Hurd and our entire Pac-12 Network's crew, this is Josh Lewin, bidding you a very happy good night from Corvallis. And if you're a fan of the Oregon State Beavers, well, you know what Gary Payton II can do. But now you also know he's got some teammates there on the wing to help him. You know the defense is going to be great. And we'll see how high the ceiling is for Oregon State this year. Good night from Corvallis.